This is John from MySolarHome.us. Welcome to this video, Eight Solar Mistakes to Avoid. Managing Expectations. There are usually two things that people want to do. One is put panels on their roof or on the ground and power their home, which I'll call residential solar. And the other is buying maybe five or six panels, using it to power a few appliances within your home, uh, maybe using it as an emergency backup. But I consider that in the realm of DIY. So for residential solar, the expectations to be set are, look, you're gonna get a zero electric bill after you go solar. It might not be completely zero, but it'll be close to zero, four or five bucks a month. So that's a good expectation to have. A second expectation that a lot of people have is that they're gonna make a lot of power and they're gonna sell that power and they're gonna make a lot of money. That is a bonkers expectation. You're not gonna make any money selling power. So if your solar system makes more power than you use, that power is gonna be sold to the grid, but they pay you peanuts for it. Just not worth putting up extra panels to make more power. The third thing is having no out of pocket. Now there are ways in which you can do solar without any out of pocket, but nothing is free. Whether you do, do a lease or you do finance, you are paying, but you might not be paying right now, you'll pay over time. So as long as your expectations are set that, look, I'm going solar, I'm doing panels on my roof, I plan to get my bill down, electric bill going down close to zero, I'm going to make some money off incentives, which my state might have, all reasonable, but I'm not going to make a lot of money printing back notes after going solar. A good expectation to have is if you're spending $2,000 on electric before solar, a good expectation would be to reduce that to maybe 50 or 60 bucks or 100 bucks over the year. And if your state is good with incentive, maybe make another 500 to 1,000 bucks over the year after going solar. If you're doing a DIY project, that's a different matter. You know, you're doing this to have fun. Mistake number two is how do you actually go about installing your solar system? Do you do DIY or do you hire a professional installer? Now, if your project involves four or five panels, connecting them to a few batteries, uh, running appliances in your home, a DIY is great, go ahead, do it. The DC voltages are small enough, it's not dangerous. But if you're planning to do solar for your home and put up maybe 15 or 16 panels in your roof, I would always advise a professional installer. And the reasons are simple. The DC voltages from 15 or 16 panels can kill you, it can spark, it can arc. If you don't have experience doing that, you might end up being very sorry doing it yourself. And even if you're pretty professional and you know what you're doing, the other part is definitely something you don't know. The paperwork involved with getting solar, connecting to the grid, connecting to your power company is humongous. It is painful and they've made it like an Olympic race. You've got to go through permits for your township. You've got to get approval from your state. Your township will have requirements, architectural drawing, electrical one-liners. It is a mess and there are five, six different hoops you have to jump through. You just won't even know which hoops to jump through and I'm telling you there are I know a lot of people who started the project on the DIY mode, spent money, and then finally went, asked for a professional installer. So if you're doing rest if you're doing panels on your roof or on the ground, go pro. Get a professional installer, whether it's a national one or a local one. Which brings me to the third point of my video. Third mistake to make is, which one should you choose? Should you choose a local installer or a national installer? Now, a national installer is is gonna be more expensive. I mean, there is, uh, you, you just can't avoid it. They're gonna be more expensive. The only national installer who's now cheaper than the others is Tesla. And I have a whole video about Tesla, Tesla solar panels and how they're good and what's bad about them. You should look at that video on my channel. Lots of good comments there too. Things are changing. So that's national, you know, you gotta have, you'll pay a little more, maybe you'll have more peace of mind. I personally prefer local installers they're much more accessible. And if you choose a company which has got a good reputation, they've got a lot of reviews on the net, talk to a few customers, they're usually so much better at giving you after-sales service. I mean, the solar systems 
don't get me wrong, they don't need much after sales, but when they need, they can be very expensive. It's better to have somebody local who will be a friend, who you have a relationship with. The national guys, they will have subcontractors. It's not always so good. So, you know, there are pros and cons, but think about it before you decide whether to go local or national. Mistake number four, sizing your system. Over 10 years, I have not met one single customer who came back and did not say, I wish I had gotten extra panels. You see, after you go solar, everybody gets a little complacent. You start using more power. Over time, you add an electric vehicle or something. You know, that zero electric bill, which you possibly could have started with, slowly turns into a bigger and bigger bill. As the solar system goes old, it starts to produce a little less power. As a rule of thumb, go for a system which meets about 125% of your power needs. And I know many of you are gonna say, oh my, the electric company will not allow it. True, many electric companies don't allow it, but some uh, installers, local installers, they do have ways around it. Ask them, can you build me a bigger system? Much, much better building a bigger system right at the get-go than adding panels later on. A lot of people say, okay, if I need more panels, I'll add them you know, two or three years later whenever I need them. It's humongously expensive to add panels later on. There are some fixed costs associated with solar. Whether you put five panels or you put 20 panels, there's fixed costs. So if you break your project, you're gonna have those fixed costs again, three years from now. So instead of spending an extra 1500 right now, when you're installing now to put a few extra panels, you'll end up spending six or 7,000 later on. Not worth it. If you, you should upsize your system, maybe 10%, 15%, best case 25%, do it now. Mistake number five. This one is obsessing with your solar panels, the efficiency of your solar panel, the brand name of your solar panel. People go crazy doing research on, on online and there are websites and websites and you know, you can, you can grow mad. Panels, take my word for it, are commodity. The top premier panels which are available in the market today. There are dozens and dozens of brands. LG, Panasonic, SunPower, Silfab, Solaria. Panels are complete commodities. The, the, the tier one panels, if it's a tier one rated Bloomberg, tier one rated, or just a tier one rated panel, you're good to go. The difference between panel A and panel B is marginal. Over 25 years, the degradation, the separation between them is marginal. Some of them are promising you 90% output after 25 years. Some of them are promising you 80% after 25 years. In my opinion, most likely after 15 years, you'll be looking at replacing your solar system, putting in new panels. Very few people are gonna stick around for 25 years. It doesn't make any difference what kind of panel you buy as long as you're buying a panel which is a tier one rated panel, 19% or more in efficiency. I've got separate videos, my channel, where you can, where I discuss what panels to buy, what brands to buy. There are some good choices but there is no point obsessing over it and looking at you know, percentage point advances of one over the other. That's mistake number five, obsessing over your panels. Also obsessing over the rest of the equipment. Right now, solar is a mature industry. The way they install, the way they put in your roof, there's no possibility of leaks if it's done by a proper installer. It's now gonna damage your roof, it's now gonna, you know, uh, this it's not gonna it's not gonna leak you you're gonna be good with, with solar panels it's it's a done to death industry everybody knows what they're doing this is you know been there done that kind of thing don't worry about it mistake number six is choosing a wrong inverter do not listen to anybody do not go for a string inverter string inverters are good if you're looking at a lot of panels if you're doing commercial solar for a home-based system with a few panels, 20, 25 pens, always better to either go with microinverters or solar edge optimizers. Me, I personally think microinverters are a slightly better choice. Not because of efficiency, they're almost equal to both of them. It's just that microinverters give you flexibility. 10 years, 15 years from now, you could potentially go to a different microinverter, you could go for a different panel with solar edge, you're stuck with that company. It's a good solution but you're stuck to that ecosystem. It's like buying Tesla and being stuck to Tesla. So that's mistake number six. If you choose, don't go for, my, don't go for string inverters, either go for micro or solar edge, preferably micro. Mistake number seven, 
what sort of products you buy. Should you buy lease? Should you finance it? Should you buy cash? Okay. All of them have their pluses and minuses. In fact, I have another video on my channel talking about them in detail. But just in short, if you're on a fixed income, let's say you're on social security, or you know you expect your, your income to stay steady for the next five, 10 years, and you don't want to spend money, it's better to go for a lease, make sure it's fixed, that the amount you pay for um, solar every month is fixed. The Tesla lease is a good option. Now, if you have some money, which you can put as a down payment, financing is a is is probably the best option where you put down a little money take a loan from the bank your credit is good you get a monthly payment your monthly payment after solar will actually be offset by your savings from your electric bill in fact if you're in a few different states the incentive might pay you back more money so that after you go solar you actually start seeing money coming back every month into your pocket instead of having you know your loan is being paid for plus you make some extra money Cash is a good option if you have the money lying around. You don't, you don't want to invest in something. Solar is a good investment. So choose the product safely. Don't make a mistake there. And finally, the eighth mistake, overpaying. I cannot tell you how many customers I've seen who bought the same product paying 50% more than somebody two streets over who's paying 50% lower. Shop around, shop around. There are so many solar companies out there and national, local shop around. Look for the best price, whether you're looking for a lease, look for finance, looking for cash, shop around. Make sure you've got four, five, six different quotes before you make your choice about solar. You will end up overpaying. So those are the eight most common mistakes that you see while buying solar. I hope this video was useful. If you liked it, do subscribe to my channel and give, give us a thumbs up. It'll help us. Thank you and you have a great day.